What up, y'all? It's your guy Dawson from D&D TV. Thank you for rating, commenting, and subscribing. Everybody who's donated, those of y'all who will, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Also, go over and check out my other YouTube channel, Dawson Speaks TV. Make sure you subscribe over there. I appreciate it. Around this time last year, up in Columbus, Ohio, a bishop, this bishop right here, Bishop Joseph White, was accused of sexually abusing and harassing several of his followers. And these followers were, were young boys and young men who attended his church and also who were in uh, the same denomination of his ministry. And I heard this story, I saw the articles, I saw the news reports, and I didn't want to touch it because I think I was doing other stories and then I know other vloggers had uh, talked about it as well. Until today. A few days ago, one of the victims in this case sent me an email. And in that email, and I'm paraphrasing, he said, Dawson, can you please talk about this situation? Because this bishop is still in his position. The church is basically hiding these sexual allegations. This bishop here has been accused of sexually assaulting or either having sexual intercourse with men in the church. From minors to married men. And nothing has been done about it. And there's currently a lawsuit against this bishop. Now, I'm going to let you all watch this video. And when I come back, we're going to talk about turned out in the church. He is the charismatic leader and bishop of a Columbus-based church with followers across the world and here in Northeast Ohio. But tonight, secrets are revealed. The investigator Tom Meyer is uncovering allegations of sex abuse against the man many feel is the closest thing to Jesus. Hi, Tom. Sarah, victims are breaking their silence, talking exclusively to us, a warning some language is explicit and inappropriate for children. And when I looked, he had pulled out his penis fully erect. Men of the Church of the Living God International say, me too. They're breaking their silence to accuse a powerful figure of sexual misconduct. Then if, if I get in trouble, let me bear my own burden. The Reverend Joseph White is the founder and presiding bishop of the Columbus-based church, which has ties in Northeast Ohio. Claims of sexual abuse against White go back decades. Like all predators, he preyed on people who he thought were vulnerable for one reason or another. Attorney Tyler Fox represented victims in the Catholic Church sex scandal and now represents some of Bishop White's victims. We've been groomed to believe that this man is the, the closest thing to Jesus. They were minors and young men at the time of the abuse. There were comments that were made that he is the holiest man on the earth. Three victims in Ohio declined to talk on camera. So the Channel 3 investigative team packed their bags and headed to Atlanta, where we connected with three more victims who decided time's up for Bishop White. Dr. White jumps on top of me like a man would be on top of a woman. Lloyd Ocampo, Kevin Glover, and Travis Durham say the bishop sexually abused them at a time when they were most vulnerable. He's bringing me and exposing me to pornography that he watches. Durham was 17 when he says the bishop exposed his private parts while they were laying in bed. And he started moving it around, and then he said, um, it's big, ain't it? CLGI is a Pentecostal church with more than 100 locations in the U.S., Europe, and elsewhere. This is their headquarters in Columbus, where the bishop is senior pastor of CLGI, Pool of Bethesda. All day long. Yeah. Some victims say White began showing them pornography when they were under 18, all part of the grooming process, they say. His typical behavior is to walk around the room without any clothes on, and his typical behavior is to get in the bed with no clothes on. Some victims say it may have felt wrong. I'm thinking, it's me, it's me, it's me. That's why I kept telling myself. But they kept thinking this was the church's top leader, the founding bishop who preached the word of God. Durham was 17 and confused when he says White began making sexual advances. Didn't know what a father figure was, didn't know what love was. There's an Ohio victim who also had a physical relationship with White beginning at age 17. A former church member shared a recording of a phone conversation she had with him. He says he was with White when he bought Viagra, took off his clothes, and began the grooming process. White may be a powerful man, but is he above the law? 
He told his congregation what the Lord said. He said, and no matter what law may pass, no matter what decision people may make, he said, none of those laws can govern you because you are in the spirit. We reached out to Bishop White, who lives here in suburban Columbus. We emailed him and we called him five times, asking him to respond to the allegations. The bishop never responded. Tom Meyer with Channel 3 News in Cleveland. But we here. caught up with him as he pulled into the church parking lot in his Mercedes. Some former church members, including minors, Dude, I want to talk have to accused you. you. Bishop White. Bishop White. <laughs> bishop White, just want to ask you about allegations that are being made against you? They're not true. They're not true? Can you elaborate? White may have denied the allegations, but he had no interest in talking about them. Victims tell me that you spent a lot of time grooming them to become sexually intimate, Bishop. The church's board of directors said in a confidential memo last August that they're investigating allegations of inappropriate conduct against the presiding bishop. His typical behavior is to walk around the room without any clothes on. Glover was stunned to find out that White was tossed out of the church for the same immoral conduct years ago. This 1994 letter obtained by Channel 3 details an earlier investigation by the Church of the Living God. The board wrote, quote, the concern was the misconduct of Bishop White. He did not deny the charges. The Bible said the flesh is, uh, is sinful. Instead of being turned over to law enforcement, White was allowed to form his own branch of the church just by adding international to the title. Church members outside Columbus, many stationed overseas like Glover, never got word White was kicked out or why. Bishop White said the church was simply expanding. The number of alleged victims continued to grow as well. All right, y'all, now let's go in. Now, first of all, let me say this. I know whenever I do stories like this, people always say, Dawson, why do you do things like this? It's because this is a platform that I have, Dawson Speak TV, that we speak things that are true and we stand up for victims. I know churches don't stand up for victims, but over here we stand up for victims and we give them a voice because many people always come over and they say, Dawson, you ought to leave it alone and just pray. You ought to just pray. Well, yeah, we're going to pray. We're going to prosecute and we're going to protect the victims and we're going to continue to talk about these issues that as you can see, the church wants to hide. Now, anytime I do stories like this, I always get people, some of them are my viewers, but many times it's from people who went to his church or people in that denomination, maybe people who know him, family members or whatnot, and they always say, oh, just let it go. Just pray. You need to leave it alone. You need to get off my bishop. Don't touch him. Just get off the topic. Get off of my bishop. You want me to get off the topic and to leave the bishop alone, but you didn't go tell the bishop to get off of those men who he was turning out. Oh, talk about it, Dawson. I plan to. You didn't tell the bishop to leave them men alone. You didn't go pull him off of them men. But you want me to get off the topic. And it is so sad and it's sick because in many churches and denominations, this is what's happening. I know y'all want me to talk about the Catholic Church, but I ain't Catholic. <laughs> I know. And I'm, I'm not. I think Leah Remini got the stuff on Scientology. And I think the other people doing stuff with the Catholic people. Some, some of us got to talk about what we're going through now. In some of these churches and what we've seen and how we've seen people die and people leave church and people basically get tossed out because they came up and said this person did this to me and this person did that. And because they didn't want to mess up the church's image or they didn't want the person to go against that person's title, they told them to leave the church. So now we have in the world broken men and broken women who are walking around. And why should we be concerned? Because those are the people y'all going to marry. Those are the people who y'all going to date. People who were molested and raped and sexually assaulted as young boys and young girls and some of them even as young men and young women and grown men and women in churches. And because Dawson talks about this, you tell me I'm going to hell? No, you going to hell and your grandma is too. You don't scare me with that mess. You got the right one now. You don't scare me with that you going to hell mess. I was reading Aldox Huxley, Aldox Huxley, let me get his name right, author of A Brave New World, and it was funny, he was being kind of uh, sarcastic when he said it, but he said, maybe this world is the hell to another planet. I think that was his quote I read. And it was so funny to me because everybody want to tell people they're going to hell and all this kind of stuff, but many of you all don't know that people are experiencing hell on earth. 
when you are a young man like these men were to deal with someone who has who has sexually harassed you, who has groomed you, who would as a bishop in this type of denomination but do those perverted acts of pulling out his genitals in front of boys, inviting all the men, the single men to come over his house so he can take advantage of some of them. I know y'all don't want me to talk about it, but I plan on it because I'm not running from this stuff. When we talk about turned out and all this kind of stuff, we talk about it in the black community as a joke and as a game. Oh, you don't go to prison. They're going to turn you out. But what about the boys and the women, the, the boys and the girls in church who've been turned out? Not only by musicians. We like to throw that around. Oh, you know, the musicians got to watch out for the mu musicians and the choir directors. No, hell no. You need to watch out for the bishop and the deacons. And the prophetess, the prophetess of all prophetess who goes around and tells everybody, oh, no more sheets and I'm delivered and all this. We were so shocked when she told everybody she was a lesbian. Not you, prophetess. You preach so hard on something. But the thing you preach so hard against, that's what you're dealing with. You trying to beat it out of everybody else because you can't beat it out of you. Now, let me work right here. You all saw in the news clipping when Bishop Joseph White was talking to his congregation and those men who were behind him in the choir stand. And when he was talking about these allegations of these men who've come out and said that they were sexually harassed and sexually uh, assaulted by Bishop and some were groomed by him. You all heard what he said when he said that God, he was talking about God when he said this. And I quote, he said, no matter what law they may pass, no matter what decisions people make, he said, and he was talking about God, none of these laws can govern you, can govern you because you're in the spirit. None of these laws can govern you because you're in the spirit. And do you see how the people in his church ate that up hook, line and sinker? And when I was I listened to that over and over and over and over again, because not only did it remind me of the same thing Bishop Eddie Long said when he came out and said, I have three rocks and I haven't thrown one yet or whatever he said. But I listened to that over and over again because I went past the Bishop Eddie Long thing and I went on into the 70s and I thought about this man right here. Y'all look at him. Y'all know who that is. Jim Jones, one of America's most infamous cult leaders. Now, I know some of y'all say, Dawson, how you going to bring Jim Jones up in this? Easy. Because y'all always talking about all these spirits everybody have and everything is a spirit. Well, let's talk about the spirit of Jim Jones that still prevails in many of these churches. The spirit of manipulation, the spirit of mind control that Jim Jones had. That spirit of so-called perversion. Huh, let's talk about it. Come on. Well, well they ain't making nobody drink Kool-Aid or Flavor Aid or whatever it was. No. But they keep you so your reality, they make you suspend reality so much to when your child or one of your loved ones come and say they were abused or they were sexually assaulted or they were molested or raped in the church that you suspend reality so much that you can't see. Nobody in my church didn't do that. The bishop didn't do that. And you think, well, it ain't hurting nobody. We just going to pray and let God handle it. But your child is hurting. Your child is dying. The person in your family who you just want to forget about it, they're hurting and they're they're dying. It's killing them. That spirit of Jim Jones that prevails in the church. Like Jim Jones, Pastor Joseph here can sleep with both men and women and nobody don't want to say nothing about it. Now, many of you all would be surprised as I am when I receive it, the emails and some letters that I get from people and I appreciate all of it, good, bad and indifferent, but I'm mostly I'm getting good stuff. People who tell me, Dawson, I appreciate your commentary. Some lady wrote me something and it just made it just I mean, when I think about it, it still brightens up my day. She said, where have you been all of my life? Now, I knew because uh, my bishop said one day somebody going to say that to you. And when they say that to you, you're going to know you and your purpose. And I never thought I'd hear nobody say that. And when that lady wrote and she was like, where have you been all of my life?
And another lady said, I wish that I had had your talks 10 years ago. I would be so much further. She said, but after therapy sessions and going through taking medication and stuff, I'm better now, but I'm glad I found you. But I wouldn't have wasted, so, I would have uh, not wasted so much time in therapy sessions and, and going here and spending money on these different conferences and stuff if I had your talk 10 years ago. That's what we doing here on little old YouTube. So when people get mad at me because I come at these topics like this, you just need to turn the channel. Ain't no need to get mad. Don't raise your, your blood pressure. Exercise your right to go to the next YouTuber's channel. That's the power that you have. Now, let me say this. With the letters that I received, I have received countless of countless emails from people who tell me, Dawson, this happened to me in church. I've been hit on by a person of the same sex. Dawson, I'm struggling with this. You hit this in a video and I thank you. A man told me uh, a couple weeks ago, man, I'm married and I'm dealing with what you said in the video and I thank you for talking about it because I really don't have nobody to talk to. And people ask me all the time, man, can we can we just Skype? Can I come on the show? Can we talk? And you know, y'all, look, I got a life now. I'm on the internet. Y'all better find some friends. But look here, nah, you know, I mean, come on now. Come on, y'all. Live in y'all state. We can't talk. When I do lies, eventually Denise and I may get into that stuff soon, but not right now. But look here. <laughs> what I want to say to y'all people who are so called, you know, you in these churches and you struggling and you have same sex issues and all this stuff, they may not see y'all, but everybody else in the world, we see y'all up in these churches and we see many of y'all who are fighting and who are hiding and some who are not falling towards what you all say is temptation and then others who just go in there and they play and they're going to be any and everything they want to be anyway. And I always ask you all before y'all start picking at people, before y'all start calling people's names and getting up there preaching on stuff that you dealing with yourself. Why don't you ask these people how they got that way? Not all of them, but some of them. Ask them. Ask them. Please. Some of these people. And this is why when I was younger, I told my grandma, my grandma always had us in church. One thing I don't like. I don't like going to gospel workshops. I don't like going to no gospel music performances. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. To me, it's just a big sex club. I will stand by that to the day I die. I don't like going to no gospel. No, no, no. Don't invite me to no gospel awards. I'd rather go to the uh, to BET Hip Hop Awards. If I'm going to be around some people who going to be who they are, let me go there. I don't want to be around no people who sing in one thing. But when you get back to the hotel, it's a big orgy. I can't work like that. Not when you sing about God one day and then we get back to the hotel. Oh, everybody, you know, and no, no, I, I, I didn't. I was a, I was a teenager and I hated that mess. How y'all going to get up here? Y'all shout all around the church at church. Everybody have a praise break, but you the biggest whore in town. You go to the gospel music workshops of America, but you go in there for gay and lesbian hookups. But you tell everybody you delivered and you struggling. You ain't struggling to suck that dick. Oh, I'm going to talk about it. Get mad. This is my show. <laughs> now, this is my take on this topic. A lot of people have been turned out in the black church and many of us don't want to talk about it. We'll say we'll throw our names like, oh, James Cleveland. Oh, you know what happened over here at the, at the Love Fellowship? Oh, you know what happens in the Koji Church? Oh, well, we just got to pray. I'm not doing none of that. We're going to talk about this mess so that the next generation of kids don't have to go through this mess. So that the next young boy who think he's coming to you to get mentored or the next girl who thinks you really want to mentor them, you really going to mentor them. You're not going to hit on them because you struggling with your sexuality because you're a pastor and it's a lucrative business and it strokes your ego because you got the spirit of Jim Jones and you can manipulate the people and it gives you a house here and a townhouse over there and three vacations a year. And you can go on the evangelism field and do your dirt when you go to different cities. We're not going to mess up the next generation of children just because you hide in your acts, your deviant sexual behavior. Now, I'm off of this topic. To the young man who sent me this, I'm praying for all of y'all in this and I hope justice is served. Now, I know Bishop here is in his 80s. I don't give a damn if he, he was 180. If you still alive, justice still need to be served. Y'all go off in the comments. Let me know what you think about this. Tell me your stories. Because this mess has to stop. There are children every day in our churches who are being turned out. Their sex lives earlier are being altered. 
And it's because the adults, we won't talk about it. But until today, we will not sit back quietly and allow these predators in the pulpits who have a Jim Jones spirit to continue to victimize people in the pews. It's your guy Dawson. Peace.